Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This video, we're gonna go over how I use Cloud Recon, a tool that Jason Haddix and I released at Cloud Village at DEF CON last year at the time of this video, to scan the whole IPv4 IP space, get certificates, find domains, and do other cool stuff. Thanks for showing up. So in the beginning here, we're going to have to start with a few slides, obviously, and then we're going to go from the slides into the results demo at the end. So stay tuned to the end for the results. And that's where all the juice is. So skip to the end, I guess, if you want to stay to the end, skip to the end. But the results are at the end. I'm going to go through the process, what happened, and then where we're at, and we'll end with the results. So again, title says what we've been saying, certificate scanning with Cloud Recon. Again, if you haven't seen the tool, Cloud Recon is a certificate scraping tool that me and Jason Haddix made it for Cloud Village for the last DEF CON at the time of this video. Thanks to Jason for coming up with the idea, getting us a spot, getting us the talk. It was a super fun time. We released the tool, so the tool's been out, again, at the time of this video, almost a year. The initial idea that I had for using the tool was for scanning cloud ranges. That's what we used it for, and that's what we released it for. But we realized that you don't have to stop at cloud ranges. So even though the tool is called Cloud Recon, there's actually a lot of other uses for the tool. You can use it on internal red team engagements and scan internal networks once you get internal. And obviously, like we're gonna show in this video, you can use it to scan the whole IPv4 space, not just what the cloud providers own. So the initial idea for doing this was I would use a VPS in DigitalOcean, and I would basically take the concurrency uh, flag on the tool, which just adds more and more Go routines that tries to read certificates faster. And I would basically just crank up the concurrency until it was using around 80% of the CPU so that it wouldn't max out the box or get in any trouble or do anything like that. I started with a $48 a month DigitalOcean box. If you just go standard on DigitalOcean, not extra CPU, not memory enhanced, not anything like that, just a standard shared DigitalOcean VPS, go to the $48 a month option, the USD, that's what I was using. And that would lead me to do anywhere, you could do anywhere from like 80K to 95K Go routines. So 80,000 to 95,000 Go routines before you started hitting that like 80 to 90% CPU usage on that box. So for testing, I wasn't hitting the whole, whoop, let's go back. For testing, I wasn't hitting the whole IPv4 space at the time for this testing. I was just hitting AWS just so I had a big space that would give me a lot of results because obviously there's going to be a lot of port 443 open on AWS, but at the same time, I didn't have to wait for it to run over the whole thing. So when I ran it like this, I got about 3 million results. So about 3 million certificates came back, which is really cool. But shout out to Bobby K. I say Bobby K because that is their username. I don't know the real name, but on Jason Haddix's discord, someone mentioned, Hey, I'm, I'm using lower concurrency and getting much different results. Why is that? And I had never actually experimented with it. I just assumed that if it had erred or it would panic or something like that, if there was a problem, but it really, the way I wrote the tool, so it's kind of my own fault, it just rolls right over the errors. It doesn't panic, it doesn't stop, it doesn't err. If it times out, it keeps going, but also if it gets any other errors, it also keeps going. Because the only point of the tool is just to get as many certificates as you can as fast as you want it to. And that's the only point of the tool. So. With Bobby K on Jason Haddix's Discord bringing it up, we did a little bit of investigation. So here comes the discovery. So again, I noticed that traffic was kind of getting silently dropped without actually erroring. Like I said, Cloud Recon was sort of built this way, and I may change that in the future. We may reiterate that in the future or do some kind of hit rate percentage or whatever. But for now, it's built that way because all you want to do is return certificates as fast as you can. So I tried running it with lower Go routines, and of course, like they found, the results got higher. And not just higher, they got exponentially higher. So it made me wonder why I didn't just get a little bit more, I got a lot more. And what I'm assuming is there's either bandwidth restrictions on DigitalOcean, or there's contract, there's lower contract tables on the operating systems and stuff on shared VPSs on DigitalOcean and that the VPS I'm running on just can't handle that many connections at once, or not even at once, just, just going back and forth on either the contract table or bandwidth. I tried to do packet captures and all this kind of thing, but on a shared VPS on a cloud provider, you can only really get so much data. We're going to go over all the numbers in the demo at the end for all of this research, but at the end, 
for just shared VPSs on DigitalOcean specifically, but I'm going to assume this number probably goes back and forth across other providers as well, Linode, Contabo, like stuff like that. I found that the optimal highest amount of Go routines to not start like silently dropping packets that has nothing to do with overloading hardware, but actually just silently dropping packets is right around 4,500 to 7,500. It was like in that range. So we want to scan all of IPv4, but now we know with the tool the way it is right now, if you go over 4,500, 7,500, that range, you start to silently lose results and you don't want to do that either. But if you scan with one box with that much, it will take you weeks to scan all of IPv4. So of course, we don't want to do that. But the caveat is the fact that we're scanning so much slower means that it really needs less hardware. Now, Cloud Recon didn't need that much hardware power to begin with, but scanning at this speed, it really barely needs any. So what I did instead is for the same price of the $48 a month VPS I was using, just one box, instead I deployed four $12 a month servers. So I kept the cost the exact same per month but it's four smaller servers, so four separate IPs, four separate OSs, all that kind of stuff, instead of one $48 a month box. Now, what I did with the IP range that I wanted to scan, so all of IPv4 in this case, is I just split it evenly, in hard quotes, into quarters, so about each, so just four lists, and each list had about the same number of IPs in each one. I gave each VPS a list, and we started scanning. So the results were that with four $12 servers, I scanned the IPv4 space and right over like five days. So it was like five days and three hours. So for $48 a month, I can consistently have certificate data that I know is no older than five days. So if it was the very first IP that it scanned, it would probably be five days and two hours old. So I know no data that I'm receiving from that scan is older than that. So if you really want to scale it out that way, you can pretty much run the numbers based on that, right? So if you only really care about having data every 10 days or every two weeks, you could probably just use two $12 a month servers, meaning you're only paying $24 a month and you're just getting data every two weeks. Maybe you're a psychopath and you want the data every other day. If so, you could probably double this and get it to around two and a half days of scan. That would be right around $100 worth of servers. And again, the other thing too is you could probably play with this and you can maybe only run 3,000 Go routines and instead of using $12 servers, now drop down and even use a $6 server. Because I wasn't really overloading those $12 servers either, but I think I might've been pushing it for a $6 server. But again, if you drop those Go routines, maybe you don't cut them all the way in half from like 5,000, maybe you just go to 3,000 and you use like six $6 boxes. You, you can play around with it, but the 4,500 to 7,500 is about as high as I would go per box and then scale out your boxes from there. So this is kind of, these results are kind of like what you would, if you want to average cost on scanning and you want to use the tool, this is about the numbers I came up with. So why do I want to do this? Because in my opinion, the subdomain brute forcing has an incredibly low hit rate and a huge amount of traffic. It can get you blocked and get all this kind of stuff. This is still active scanning. Obviously, you're still connecting to your target, but it has much more effective results faster, in my opinion, because you're only connecting to each IP once. If it's, there's not a certificate on that port, it's not there. And if there is, you take it and you move on. It's just one handshake's worth of connections, and then you move on to the next one, which is very normal traffic. And it tells you, when you brute force, you still have to figure out whose it is and if they actually own it and stuff like that. And again, you have to go through these huge, like millions and millions of guesses lists just to maybe get a few that you haven't seen before, where this tells you what's actually deployed on the internet. Or again, if you have five day old data, what used to be a very, a very short time ago. So I finished a five day scan and maybe the very first thing I scanned on that first day went offline. It's only five days old. So I knew it was there five days ago and it may come back. So to me, I think it's kind of cool with how not that expensive it is to get compute power nowadays and get access to this kind of compute power. It's something that seems very easy to do if you're trying to do wide range recon against a target that has a large scope. So now we're gonna do the demo results. So here are the demo results that we have. So 
for this one, just to make a quick explanation of the picture, this was on the $48 a month box. And I was running things off one box and it was against all of AWS's IP address. So if you look at each of these files, there's a 90, it tells you how many go routines I'm running and what the timeout is. So I have 90,000 go routines with a two second timeout, 20,000 with a two second, 10,000 with a two second, 5,000 with a two second, and 500 with a two second. All against the same AWS IP space, right? So as you can imagine, this 90K one took about two hours to run against AWS's IP space, like right around two hours, where the 500 one took three or five days, something like that. I don't 100% remember. But if you look at the results, they're pretty shocking, right? So with 90,000 Go routines, I found right under 3 million certificates, which is cool. That's awesome. When I dropped it to 20,000, all of a sudden I shot up and found eight and a half million certificates. So just by dropping down to 20,000, I'm already at 8 million. Now, the reason why I left this 10K here and this dip was because I still wanted to show that even though you might think like, oh, this 20,000 was a good run, like I'm actually cool with this difference between 8.4 million and these 9.2s down here. But even this 20K, 10K range here, as you can see, this 10K run that I did was only 6 million. So they go way up and way down, like by the millions, depending on, you know, your luck with that scan, if you use these high go routines. So again, if you're going to do these high go routines, maybe you can risk it and maybe you can, you know, just get odd results and just keep scanning over and over and try and catch the ones you missed. You can, but once you get down to this 5K range, I got the same, almost the same number, like, within a very good like standard deviation almost every time at 5k and I bumped it up to 7k and it still did about the same but then you notice when I go down to 500 from 5k it's basically the same result like it's almost the same exact number of results and it was almost every time right so going way down to like 500 or something or 100 or whatever didn't do me any good the few times I tried it there was really a plateau like once you hit like I said, right around the 4,500 to 7,500, depending on the test. So these are the numbers for it. Again, when I scanned, if you look in here, this is from some of my scans. So I, I put some different stuff together here. So if you can't, so this is the actual time. I should have just brought this up first. So the 90K threads, when I was running 90K Go routines, it ran in an hour, but it only found 3 million. Where when I ran 5K, it took eight hours. So basically a whole workday. But again, when you look at the picture, I found 3 million in an hour, but if I would have waited the whole workday for it to run with, with uh, 5,000 go routines instead of 90,000, I would have found literally triple the certificates, triple the results, right? So these are the times, again, the 500 ran about three and a half days, but didn't find anything extra. So at that point, you're just plateauing. Now, when I ran it against all of the IPv4 space. When I split it into those four boxes, I kept it at, I think I used 5,000 Go routines. So here, this is the all results. This is them all put together. Again, you can see the group one through four results here. Those are from each box and specifically. So when all those were done, they made their own results thing. I pulled them all together. And then obviously you just cat them all into all results. So once this number, again, just even counting the lines is taking a minute here for all the results. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, it's like 34 million and it should come up here pretty soon. But then the other files that are here is this PNG is obviously the picture we were looking at. But what I did then is, as you'll see, the lines that come in here are all JSON lines. And what I did is I just did some stuff so we can see this IP to domains is something that I like. So I basically split up the JSON because you can have multiple domains in each certificate. So I go through each JSON and take the IP colon domain. Do that for every domain, for every IP. So it's actually like a little longer. And then what I did here is I just sorted it. So because some certificates have like multiple of the same domain to the same IP. So as there we go. So it finally finished. So for all my results, I found right around 33.3 million certificates, all of IPv4. So this isn't how many domains I found, because again, some can have one record in the CN, some can have one record in the CN, but then like 80, 
you know, just a huge list in the subject alternative names, right? So this doesn't necessarily mean how many domains I found. It's how many certificates I found, right? But so then what I like to do is again, I, let's do, uh, let's do like five of the sorted results. So here's what I'm talking about. So what I like to do is I like to go through, I'll show you what the, what, so when it actually comes out of Cloud Recon with JSON, it looks like this. And again, these are obviously just the certificate data, IP, organization, common name, and then subject alternative name. And those are just a list. So as you can see, like the, the common name here has remote.moog.com and so does the subject alternative name, right? So those are like duplicates. So when they get spread out here, they'll actually get sorted out. That's why it's sorted results. So that's just what I like to do is I like to take this JSON and turn it into this thing. And again, because that way I like to sometimes what I'll do is I'll take those and I'll put them through and I'll look for virtual hosts or do other stuff like that, right? But the idea is again, there's 33.3 million certificates to parse through full of domains, full of juicy data, all that stuff for five days of testing. And you can do that every five days. You can have it just repeat itself over and over and over again. And what I was doing there cost me 48 US dollars a month on DigitalOcean. And I think if you wanted to play the game, you could probably get it a little slower or a little cheaper and not that much slower. If you maybe put it down to like 3000 go routines, but spread it out between like six or eight, $6 boxes, you would probably, you know, if you did six, you would actually get $36. You know what I mean? You can math it out. But it's right around what it cost me was a $48 a month worth of boxes. I can get those results every five days, parse through them and do whatever I want with them. So again, that's pretty much all I have. The talk that we did at Cloud Village will be down below. The GitHub repo for the tool will be down below. I'm going to link Jason Haddix's Twitter, even though if you follow me, you follow Jason. Like, come on, we all know the, the thing here. But it will be linked down below as well. Try the tool, see what you think, scan the internet. You'll find funny domains in there. You'll find, you know, meme coin domains in there, all kind of stuff. It'll be very interesting. Play around the tool. Let me know what you think. But that's all I have for this one, guys. So for now.